Thanks to Tears of Themis for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, Hayley here. And in today's video, we're going to discover the consequences of my actions. I have done something that might be considered uh, a taboo or a sacrilege in figure collecting. I've gone ahead and bought a figure that didn't come with a box. Which is really not that big a deal, but it is something that I've never done. Uh, I've always wanted to play it safe, play it cautious. Uh, I want it to come in a box. I want to have the box. I don't want it to get damaged during shipping. Um, so I just never considered buying a figure without a box. Until recently when I filmed my uh, top figures that I want or that I can't find in 2021 video. And I was kind of looking at the prices of these figures and thinking, God, I don't think I'm ever going to get any of these. And then I saw one without a box and I thought that's a good price and so I jumped on it. <laughs> so the figure that I picked up off that list is actually the Yumeko Jabami Art FX Kotobukiya figure. And uh, I said in that video but I'll say it again, this figure retailed for 12,000 yen and now she goes for 30,000 yen. And I want to buy her with her Kotobukiya exclusive faceplate um, and that means she's definitely like 30,000 yen. And 30,000 yen is just too much money for a one-seventh of a girl standing there looking kind of crazy. <laughs> no? So then I saw a Yahoo Japan auctions listing for her without a box, authentic, and with the Kotobukiya exclusive faceplate for 11,000 yen. And I was like, oh, that's that price. I'll pay that price for this figure. So I decided to take the risk, take the plunge, um, and I bought her. First, a quick word from our sponsor. Tears of Themis is a free-to-play mobile game by MiHoYo, the creators of Genshin Impact, and is a detective-style Otome game filled with romance and wits. Within the city of Stellus, there has been an increase in the number of mental health cases and incidents that threaten Stellus' social security. People have somehow grown more violent and volatile. You, the player, will peel away layers of data and uncover the truth about what is going on within Stellus. Featuring dynamic illustrations and some great voice acting, go on a detective adventure, collect evidence, interrogate and inspect to gather clues to deal out justice in the courtroom and get closer to solving the mystery. Players can also interact with four unique male characters through an immersive romance experience featuring messages, video calls and interactive games all bundled together with some amazing dynamic artwork. Increase your affection level to unlock new stories and interactions. The Christmas Partyland event launched on December 11th, featuring new cards and plenty of Christmas themed content to discover, so be sure to check that out. Thanks again to Tears of Themis for sponsoring this video. Now I guess I'm worried about a few things. I am worried obviously that she'll be broken. I'm also a little worried that she might be a bootleg or kind of not as advertised. The seller had good ratings, but the price still seems really good and I'm just a little doubtful. Okay, I can't wait any longer. I want to know <laughs> whether I have a Jibami figure or not. So she shipped in this little box um, to Bai, which is where I shipped her from. Um, and then I did consolidate her with a bigger order. Opening it up, I am met with an ominous layer of bubble wrap. Here's the bubble wrap. I like that there is a lot of bubble wrap. Okay, I think this is her head. Oh, that's nice. They've wrapped up, you know, her head in a bubble wrap bag. And the head itself is in like a layer of plastic here. Oh, wow. And then they've even got the packaging over her face, just like most figures do when you first buy them. Okay, head is in one piece. I've got a good feeling about this because I was most worried about the hair because look at the like amount of hair here. So I'm super chuffed and looking at it, 
don't think it's a bootleg. This looks beautiful. So, um, oh, I'm so excited for the rest of it. I'm not too worried about the base breaking or anything. So again, also in its own plastic. Ooh, I love this base. It's got a nice clear base with, um, of course, some different playing card patterns on there. Did you notice I've got my Casino Bunny wall scroll for the gambling theme? Oh, and I'm also gambling on if this figure's like broken or not. Just so on theme here on this channel. It's all about the theming. A stray arm. It's so weird. Does she come with alternate arms? Maybe she's like this and like that. Arm looks good. Arm looks good. Okay, I've got some legs. I've got a body. This is taped up quite crudely. Uh, I'm just gonna have to rip it here. Oh, there we go. The body looks good as well. So the arm just goes in like this. I guess for this figure, it's really nice that the arm comes off because two fairly cylindrical pieces like this is a lot safer to transport than if this was actually sculpted as one piece, like that would just break probably pretty easily. Oh my gosh. Okay, I've put all the pieces together and here she is. I feel like I've cheated the system, I don't know. Okay, she looks amazing. Oh, did I get the faceplate? Oh, I forgot about the faceplate, yes. Oh my God, yes. I did also get her like crazy faceplate. Oh my God, this is perfect. Kotobukiya exclusives are always like such must haves for the figures. Um, that is everything. And then they also put in a nice uh, bottom layer of bubble wrap as well. I am really happy with the result of this gamble. Um, she hasn't come damaged at all. Uh, the seller packed everything really well. And I think surprisingly for a figure with this hair, she actually comes apart into pretty easy to bubble wrap and transport pieces. And there was so much bubble wrap in the box around the figure, in between all of the different parts of the figure, that I think it'd have to be pretty difficult for her to get broken during transport. Let's talk about the figure for a minute because this is one that was on my figure wish list and I am just very happy that I have her now. She is stunning. The ultimate biggest standout for this figure has to be her hair. I love how her hair flares out behind her and I love how her fringe is kind of like blowing in the wind. I also really like the shading to the hair. They've added some blue shading to the hair as opposed to keeping it all jet black. Kotobukiya also nailed Jabami's facial expressions. Both the default faceplate and the crazy one are perfect and completely capture her craziness from the anime. The body sculpt is also really nice. The pose is perfect for Jabami. And I like the little motion they've introduced into the skirt. If I had one complaint, it'd be that while the shoes are really nice and detailed, the joint of her foot going into the shoe is a little rough. I don't know if mine's just come loose a little bit. So I'm a very happy chappy right now. I, I love the figure. Uh, do I think she's worth 30,000 yen? No. But is she worth 11,000 yen? Yes. But the question is, is she worth 11,000 yen when she doesn't come with the box? And now I'm forced to reflect on what is the value of the box of a figure? And I'm in two minds. Because on one hand, I'm firmly in the camp of, I would never throw a figure box away. Uh, I have never done that and I never want to do that. I want to keep the box for a couple of reasons. The first of all, I want to be able to transport it safely. Like I'm gonna move three times in the space of a year. And for someone with a figure collection, it is important that they all get to the destination in one piece and not broken. And the second point is having the box keeps the value of the figure. Like I bought Jibami for a third of her aftermarket value all because she didn't come with a box. I guess you can also think about that second point as a derivative of the first point. So 
The figure's value is dependent on being able to transport it safely. No one wants to buy a figure that they're gonna get broken. And so really the value of the box is the value of not breaking it during transit. Because I don't think people keep boxes for any other reason. Like I don't like the box that just goes into a cupboard. I really don't care until I have to move the figure. Uh, I think I'm thinking about figure boxes a little too deeply. I feel like I could write a thesis on it, but um, yeah, I guess long story short, I realized that for me, I don't really care about the box from a collector's and having a complete collection point of view. I just care about the box because that's how I transport the figure. So if it's a figure that is kind of easy to transport, like you could wrap it up in bubble wrap and it'd be fine, I guess I'm open to buying it without a box. If it saves me like 60% of the price, hell yeah. I'm not gonna go start buying Eastream figures without boxes. I think you're just setting yourself up for a world of pain there. But maybe just like general standing one seventh figures, I might consider going boxless. Is that crazy? And the other important thing here is that the person you're buying the figure from has to package it well. This person I bought it from had great reviews, so I kind of trusted them. Uh, but I probably wouldn't trust just like your average Joe on Facebook Marketplace unless they had a bit of proof or kind of made it a big point in their sales post. But yeah, um, this has been my experience buying a figure without a box. It went well. I kind of feel like I'm going to do it again because I want good deals. But what do you guys think? Would you ever consider buying a holy grail of yours if it didn't come in a box. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.